So what I did was the first day I tried it, I did the four tablespoons thing. Um, the next day I dropped it down a little, but then within a few days I was down to two tablespoons a day, mixed into the half cup of no-fat cottage cheese every day. I, I hate to do this because I didn't get her permission to say anything. I'm not going to mention her name. Um, I had a landlord a couple years ago who had brain cancer, and she didn't want to get any treatment for it. She didn't want radiation. She didn't want chemo because she saw what it had done to her mother when her mother had had brain cancer. And her mother basically went senile and had bladder control problems. And she wanted to die with all her marbles. Uh, so um, she basically was refusing treatment and not doing anything. And when she heard about the flaxseed oil and cottage cheese thing that I tried, and, you know, I was raving about how much it helped me, even though I'm a vegan, you know, and, which, again, is quite a testimonial. Um, she decided to try it, uh, and she's still alive today. She mentioned, and, and I noticed this as well, so this is a good time to bring it up. One thing they mentioned on the Internet is when you start this thing, you will just start to crave that mixture of the, the no-fat cottage cheese and flaxseed oil. I mean, you'll look forward to it the next day. And I experienced that, which to me is a sign of deficiency. I mean, when you start craving things that have iron in it or start craving things that have, uh, you know, selenium or zinc in it, um, you know, you're, it, that's usually when you're deficient. I mean, that's my personal experience. I have read other accounts where people also believe that, that food cravings are largely your body remembering where it got something and trying to solve a deficiency that way. Well, she and I both experienced that. Uh, it's, a, it's a very powerful craving, and that was mentioned over and over again on the Internet, so I thought I'd mention that as well. The point of going through all these symptoms, though, was, uh, you know, you're going to have to judge for yourself whether it seems uh, as though a cancer diagnosis was correct. I mean, I have to judge for myself. I think I have cancer. I can't prove it. Uh, but these things helped me. And, you know, that's, that's what I want to put out there, is when I felt like I had cancer, what I had seemed to be cancer, um, this protocol seemed to work for me. And that's why I put this together for everyone, you know, so everyone can benefit from what I learned. Um, and, uh, you know, you can put that together with your own research and make your own decisions. Uh, so that was the, the protocol that I used. And, you know, I wouldn't call it Pam Rotella's protocol. I took little pieces of different doctor's protocols and put them together. I just wasn't going to go through all the diagnostic process and put myself into mainstream medicine's care. <laughs> uh, I, I've known people who've gone through that. Uh, most of them haven't survived. And uh, I have read studies on it, which I don't want to cover right now because then I'd have to dig out the studies to prove that this or that study said, you know, whatever I'm saying. Um, it, it's just I didn't feel it was the right way for me to go. Uh, I've met people who've done everything differently, and it worked out well for them. Also, you know, another advantage to this was a good zapper is a little less than $200 these days. Um, the herbs really weren't that much. I mean, when you get into... Uh, at least the prices back then, grapefruit seed extract was around $12 a bottle, colloidal silver was $20 for a small bottle. I mean, it wasn't a lot. It wouldn't get you through very well. Oregano was about $20 for a small vial. Um, the price of gold and seal varied at the time. It was somewhat expensive, maybe $14 to $20 for a bottle, uh, because gold and seal has to be wild crafted. And, uh, in other words, it won't really grow in a garden. It has to be dug up out of the woods. It seems to like the soil in the woods. That's its native habitat. So people have been over-harvesting golden seal, and so it's harder to find. So it was more expensive. I'm not exactly sure how much it is now. I think it's expenses held. It's, it's still somewhat more expensive. So $14 to $20 a, for, a, you know, just a tincture uh, bottle, a small bottle of tincture. Although you don't need that much every day. Um, and then... Elderberry extract varies quite a lot. I mean, obviously, elderberries are plentiful. The expense is in processing it to be an extract. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know, maybe 10 bucks a vial at the time. Um, the parasite herbs were $20 for the black walnut whole tincture bottle of that. It lasted a few weeks. And then $10 each or less for the 
cloves and the, the ground cloves and the um, wormwood. So, I mean, you're talking a few hundred dollars. This whole thing ran me a few hundred dollars plus the supplements like vitamin C, you know, or what was that? I think I paid ten dollars for a bottle of vitamin C, a good bottle. Um, and then the multivitamins I was taking anyway, the food changes, which, you know, made eating a little more expensive. Um, so it, it is a certain amount of money. Oh, the flaxseed oil was over $20 a bottle, closer to 30 for a large bottle of Barleyan, which is organic and cold pressed. Um, the cottage cheese was about $4 a, a small tub for the organic stuff, but the non-organic was just about as expensive. Um, so, I mean, there was a certain amount of expense involved. The thing that helped me the most, though, you'll notice, was only, what, $30 for a large bottle of flaxseed oil and then the cottage cheese. And also, there is um, flaxseed oil that's a little less expensive. I mean, you can, you can get other brands. I must say, though, I tried Trader Joe's flaxseed oil. I don't mean to pick on Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's has a lot of nice things. It's not in every state. It's not in every city. You're pretty lucky if you have a Trader Joe's in your city. Um, but I was buying their flaxseed oil for a while, and then, because it was only like $8 for a bottle, although the bottle was about half the size of a big bottle of Barleyans. So, I mean, the cost savings really wasn't that great. Um, but I put one of those glass bottles in the freezer once, and guess what? A good chunk of it solidified. Well, if it were pure flaxseed oil, or if they hadn't processed the omega-3s out of it, it wouldn't solidify at all. In fact, that's why cold water fish, a lot of them have flaxseed oil, or not flaxseed oil in them, but that's why they have such high omega-3 content, is so that they won't freeze in cold water, um, so that their oils, and, and you know, won't become sluggish. And, you know, that's, that's the advantage for them. That's why, uh, you know, flaxseed oil, um, or not flaxseed oil, but again, a linolenic acid or omega-3 fatty acid, um, it, it's found <laughs> in these fish. It's, uh, and so I don't know what was in there. I know they added some things supposedly for freshness like vitamin E, um, but I mean that's a caution. Now the landlord I had who was doing the no-fat cottage cheese and flaxseed oil thing um, used Trader Joe's flaxseed oil to start. So I mean there was some in there and I seemed to feel fine when I was on it, but still it shouldn't be solidifying. So it might be a blend of other oils. It, it may have been that in processing it so that it wouldn't spoil, they processed a lot of the omega-3s out of it. You just have to make that decision for yourself. Maybe you have a Trader Joe's in your town. Maybe you don't have a lot of money and you need to get through this. You need to do something. And you've decided that, you know, from reading the accounts on the internet and reading William Fisher's book and listening to me that you want to try the flax oil thing, maybe that's all you can afford. You know, maybe all you have this week to spare is 20 bucks. Well, maybe it'll help. You know, I mean, so you have to make your decisions. On the other hand, if you have a couple hundred bucks to spare, maybe it would be better to get the better quality flaxseed oil. Um, you know, maybe your family can chip in and buy everything you want for you, which is great. Alternative medicine, a lot of times, is cheaper uh, than mainstream medicine, although not always. I mean, you know, some people like to try a Rife machine, which is a frequency generator. Uh, a zapper is a similar thing, only it uses a different type of wave, the positive offset wave, but I mean a, a good right machine can run you a few thousand dollars. So there are things in alternative medicine that are more expensive. You know, you have to decide what's right for you though and go with that. I, I have always been amazed over the years how people seem to be attracted to the things that they need.